Alafia, and welcome back to the online IFA classroom. My name is David Graham. I go by Awo IFA Foray at the IFA Foundation International. And for those of you that are returning, thank you for coming back. For those of you that are brand new to the site, thank you for stopping by. And very quickly, uh, again, the online IFA classroom is a place for both uh, new individuals to the path of IFA and those that are seasoned in the path uh, to go and receive free information, absolutely no charge, um, and have a discussion about IFA, uh, IFA in its historical text, IFA as it exists in modern day North America, um, and any form and facet of the spiritual discipline as practiced by the Yoruba people of what is now Western Nigeria. Uh, and make no mistake, it is a spiritual discipline, discipline being the operative word. Uh, but more on that some other time. <clears throat> Today, I thought it would be, in, be appropriate um, to touch on a subject that, frankly, I dread talking about, uh, only because this is something that has crystallized or locked in my mind long ago, and that is self-evident to me in the practice of Ifa. Um, yet is something that is uh, continually very controversial, uh, something I'm always asked about, something that I find myself discussing regularly. Uh, but I thought it was a good follow-up to the last piece about the way that it's always been done, um, and a cautionary tale of doing things a certain way because that's the way that it's always been done. Um, and if you haven't checked that piece out yet, please go back and watch that before watching this one. Uh, but today, I want to talk a little bit about the idea of blood offerings, blood sacrifice, animal sacrifice in Ifa. Um, you know, I get more and more clientele, more and more people that I work with, uh, more and more people that we initiate that are either vegetarian, vegan, um, large on animal rights, um, whatever the case may be who simply cannot stomach the thought of using the animals to do the work. Uh, and many people, especially traditional Ifa or Santeria Lakumi folks, are very surprised that um, I was initiated without the use of any animals. Um, that in all of my years of doing this, uh, and doing weddings, initiations, healing ceremonies, get out of jail free ceremonies, um, death rituals uh, that I've never had to, nor has one been called for in divination, uh, use an animal to perform the work. Um, so let's talk about that a little bit, shall we? Yes, it is true that in ancient Africa, in ancient Yoruba land, uh, animal sacrifice was part and parcel to the work being done. Uh, in my opinion, animal sacrifice is not a necessary part of IFA in North America in 2016. Uh, and I would even go so far as to quote Afalabi Apega, who initiated Maya Luo, who in turn initiated me, fifth generation African Babalao, uh, as saying that he didn't think that people in North America could handle the idea of cutting the heads off chickens. Uh, and you can look that up online, there's a, a site by a gentleman, I believe it's called Tamarind Years, a tribute to Afalabi Apega, and there's an audio file where Afalabi essentially says that the sum and substance of this philosophy for North America in the New Age is going to be divination. Uh, the understanding of divination, the Odu, the understanding of the Orisha and making the connections. <clears throat> the the use of animals will be less and less um, because, again, we in North America, this is not part of our daily life. Uh, by the way, I should stop here and say this is probably going to be a two-part video series because I don't think there's any possible way to get this information into one 10 or 15 minute video. Uh, but let's look at this in historical terms. In historical context, you have to remember that Ifa was, if nothing else, a communal spiritual discipline. Well, what did that mean? That meant then when a young man or young woman, and yes, women can be initiated as Ifa priests, uh, were going to initiate Ifa when it was called for through divination. It was typically a community ceremony. 
It was a day of celebration where the entire community came out, uh, typically several days of celebration, but the, the high point, the culmination, was the actual initiation ceremony itself. Uh, the entire village would turn out, they would pray as a community, they would witness the event, and more importantly, they would celebrate as a community. And what do you do when you have large groups of people doing work and getting together? You need to eat. Um, this is the time that typically a, a large four-legged animal was used. Uh, the ceremony was performed. The initial blood of the animal was offered to the energy being initiated. Um, and it wasn't a, a question of if a little blood is good, a lot of blood is better. It was very little blood was let over the tools. Um, and then the animal was promptly broken down, put over a fire. Um, and then the ashe, the blessing, the power of that animal was given to the entire village through community meal. And it was believed that the ashe of the ceremony was ingested through the meat of the animal. And you see this over, over and over in religious traditions, whether it's uh, you know, traditional kosher butchering, uh, etc. I have no problem with traditional Ifa practitioners, Santeria Lakumi practitioners, uh, who practice with blood offerings in the historical text. Um, I think it's I think it's fine uh, as long as you treat the animal with dignity and respect, as long as you dispatch the animal as quickly and painlessly as possible, um, and I think most importantly, as long as again that animal is used to feed and strengthen and support the Ifa community that comes together to do the ceremonies. Now, all of that being said, when we use an animal simply for its blood and throw away the carcass, uh, when the animal is mistreated both before and during the ceremony, um, when we go to the animal only because that's the only way we know how to do it, then I think it's time to step back and analyze our motivations for doing things. I love to give this analogy. <clears throat> the analogy is that if I'm a vegetarian and I only believe in eating plants and I don't believe in taking the life of any living being, does that mean that I can't initiate Ifa? Does that mean that if I have to have a major ceremony performed and I refuse to have an animal used, that the work will not quote unquote work? If the answer to those questions is yes, then I am personally practicing the wrong philosophy because it means that the power of the Arisha, the power of Arumula, uh, is somehow diminished by not having the thing. Um, this is the same mentality that says that only palm oil will be acceptable when oil is called for, uh, that you can only offer a rooster to eschew for this malady. Um, that only men can be initiated as Ifa priests. This is the same mentality about the way that it's always been done, about an attitude that keeps people enslaved. Um, there are genuine taboos in what we do, uh, and there are very few. You can probably count them on one hand. The truth is, and I know through my own experience and through working with enough people, that it is about the connection of the Ifa priest doing the work to the energies that he is working with. That's what makes the change in your life, in the life of the client. That is what sparks the energies uh, that we ignite during initiation for an Ifa priest. Uh, that is what connects the imbo for the client to the Arisha or to the energy to make their life better. It was never supposed to be, you can't initiate without a goat or a rooster. It was supposed to be, and still should be, a communal experience where the idea that if one person is praying for something, that's great. If 10 people are praying for something, it has the power of a hundred and so on and so forth. So that was the purpose of the animals. Um, I have seen in my own EFA development that they are absolutely not necessary. So for anyone out there who wants to learn more about this path, who 
wants to initiate, who wants to explore, uh, but has been holding back because they can't stomach the thought of watching an animal sacrifice, uh, I would encourage you to come, to gather, to seek out the IFA Foundation, to seek out practitioners who do the work uh, in a manner that sits well with you. Uh, having been to both, I can tell you that I no longer attend ceremonies where animals are used. Um, not because I have something wrong with the folks that need it, because I know in my heart that it doesn't need to be done. And if it doesn't need to be done, then that means there are other ways that it can be done. And as such, you know, I don't have to be there. I know if a priest that specialize in the animals, they do a very good job, and it's certainly appropriate for them to perform the ceremony. Um, so I, I'm going to explore this a little later in a second video, and maybe talk into some specifics about, well, what do you do instead? You know, why are the animals not necessary? What part of it am I missing? I'm sure I'll get lots of questions uh, over YouTube. And I'm fairly certain I'll probably get a couple nasty comments to go along with it too, but uh, neither here nor there. If I can reach out to one person, two people, and spark their mind, spark their interest, resonate somewhere within them, that you can perform this work without all of that, and that it will be just as effective, I would argue years down the road more effective um, than I've done my job. So as always, I welcome questions, concerns, comments, and criticisms. You can email me or you can email me directly through YouTube. Uh, I'll try to get another piece out in the next couple weeks, uh, Bloodless Part 2, to get into a little bit more specifics. Um, in the meantime, as always, take care of yourselves and take care of each other.